Hi, this is Robin, and this is part two of my video workshop on how to create unique black and white styles or looks, depending on the term you prefer, in Photoshop. In the part one video, I showed two methods to create uh, different unique black and white styles. They were minimalist and faux infrared, and I showed how to create those looks from color photos. In this part two video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create both low key and high key black and white style images, again, from a starting color original. Now, for each look, I'll do the same thing I did in part one. I'll briefly define it. I'll suggest some image capture ideas for the kind of images that will work best for these types of conversions. And then I'll jump right into a step-by-step -step of different tools to use in Photoshop to achieve the look. And as usual for my videos, I'll put the links to the start times for each of the demos in this video in the description below the video itself. So you can look for that there if you want to hop around or revisit specific videos. Okay, so let's get started. This is demo number three because demos one and two are in the part one video. And in this video, I'm going to work with this image here, which is an Adobe stock image um, to create a low key black and white image look. So as I said, let me start with the definition. So what makes a low key image? To my way of seeing it, low key images have reduced lighting and they have very controlled lighting placement. Um, they had, tend to have a lot of darker tones and shadows because that's why it's low key. It's dark, it's shadowy. They tend to have starker contrasts and very often or usually they have a dramatic or a storytelling or a cinematic kind of a quality to them. I definitely think of low key for me as different than underexposed. To me, that just means there hasn't been enough light in the scene or purposeful light or you just didn't use the right settings for capture or something of that nature. Um, I'm definitely not a stickler for the fact that in a low key image, every pixel has to be below 50% gray on the histogram. Some people are. I'm not. I think it adds a little interest to have a few pixels that are up above that 50% mark on the histogram. So you can decide for yourself what you want. But the lighting is very purposeful, I think. I think those are the keywords in a low key image, and it is dark. Um, I'd say from a capture perspective, if you start with a darker original, it will be faster to create a low key black and white look so you can save some of the time and steps that I'm going to go through. But as you can see, this has dark elements, but it's not a super dark or a super dark background. So I'd rather show you on something like this so that you know how you can deal with it if you want the flexibility to darken images that aren't already very dark that you want to work with. So just keep in mind, some of the steps I'll do will be optional if your image is already darker. So as I said, here's my original. Let's It's opened into the layers panel as a background. So to duplicate that, I always like to have a duplicate to work on so we don't mess up the original. Use a control or command and J to jump that background layer up to a duplicate layer like that. And I'm going to start with a semi-automated black and white conversion tool in Photoshop that's not one of the household name tools. So we're going to go to the top of the left of the interface to the image menu right up here where my highlighter is and come down to where it says calculations. So image calculations and left click on that and it'll pop open this box and you can see it has already done the conversion from color to black and white on my sample image that I'm using as an example in the demo. Now let's look in this box. Um, what we have here is you can use with calculations two different sources if you want to. The way I'm using it, it's just a single source that I'm splitting. So 
just you can work with it in the same way I am. So I'm leaving this layer option, and let me just show you the other options, as merged uh, because it is just a single image. Then you have a choice of the channels that you want to use. And of course, you could invert it too, but I don't want to create a negative kind of a look. So um, here are the options. So let's just click on each one and see what it does to the image. So there's gray. That makes it darker. Red. I like this better because to me, this is presenting a story of sadness, of solitariness, of loneliness. I want the focus on this area in him, and I want the expression on his face to be critical. So that's where, as I said about the purposeful light, that's where I want the light. I want some context for where he is. So let's just keep that in mind as we look at options and think about that for yours as you look at options of settings for your image. Let's see what the green channel does. No, see, so that's putting more emphasis over here and lessening the emphasis on his face, which for my image isn't what I want. And blue makes it even darker. So for my image, I'm going to stick with the red. So let's come down to source number two, which again, in my instance, is a single image. So I'm not going to adjust the layer. Let's just look and see if there's any differences. It should just pretty much function the same way here with the channels and transparency would be pure white. So I'm just going to stick with red in both of those instances on those layers for the initial black and white conversion for this image. Next, as we come down in this calculations box, uh, there's a blending mode option here. And so I'm coming across to the down arrow. You can just mouse over and see which of the blending modes for your image you think does the best convert. Oh, okay, so I like overlay. Huh. So overlay and hard light to me look pretty much the same. So given the choice of if they're the same thing, I would go with the overlay. And so you can just see, you can mouse over and for yours, um, pick the blend mode that you like or just leave it on normal. I'm going to go with overlay because I like the more contrasty, stark, dramatic look that I said goes with a low key image. And then you also have the flexibility here to adjust the opacity if you want to. So let me just see if I want. So I typically will click on the word opacity and keep it depressed and just start dragging down. Yeah, so that's too much. We're losing that contrast. I'm going to leave mine there because um, it has opened up this side of his face. It's not just blending into the shadows, um, yet we've kept some of the starkness and the darkness of that. Okay, so now the next choice that you have, and I'm not going to mask either, um, is where to put your result. And uh, by default here, it's coming up to new channel. You could also create a new document or a selection, but I want it to go to a new channel. So I'm going to leave that there and click OK in the upper right of this calculations pop-up box. OK, and you'll see it highlighted this in pink for mine. So now that we've created a new channel, want to go to the channels tab. So we're currently in the layers tab. I'm going to click on the channels tab. Before I do that, let me just show you. If you do not have a channels tab visible and showing, come to your window menu here at the upper part of the interface. Come down to where it says channels and just click on that and that will open up a channels tab and a channels panel for you. So I'm going to left click on that channels tab to reveal the channels panel and you can see that by doing what I just did and adding a new channel in addition to the RGB combined channel and the individual channels we now have this alpha channel that came from the calculations adjustments that I made. So click on that channel and what I want to do is first select and copy all of this content from the calculations because we won't be able to work on this or process it as a channel. So I need to create a layer. So I'm going to press control if you're on a Mac command and A and that selects all of the content in this channel. So you can see there's the marching ants around the perimeter of this. So that's suggesting everything inside is selected. 
and then want to copy it, I do a Control or Command C for copy. All right, and then what we're going to do is go back to, we've made the copy of all the content on that channel. Go back and click again on your Layers panel. And what you want to do now is come to the bottom of the Layers panel and come to the Add New Layer icon, which is this box with the plus, so you get the transparent layer. And now we want to paste that copied content. So Control or Command V to paste. So now we have that on that layer. So this is, just let me label it so you have it for reference. This is the calculations, black and white, conversion, channel, copy. Okay. All right. So that's what we have is the black and white layer that we created using that uh, calculations box. All right, so now that we have it in a layer, we can do some more toning and processing work on it. Now, depending on your starting image, you, if you had a darker background, might be finished right here. You might have a low key image and feel pretty good about it. So there's nothing that says you have to keep going and do these other steps I'm doing. I'm just showing you that if you're working with an image like I am that has some lighter background elements to it or qualities to it and you want to make it even darker for a low-key look here's some other steps you can uh, perform okay so now i'm going to try to select this lighter area over here because that's way too dark uh, i mean way too light sorry for a low-key image for me so i want to I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to do this on my toolbar um, here which is docked right adjacent to my layers I'm going to choose the object selection tool, which is this box with an arrow. You also could just lasso around if you want. I'm going to select this area to the guy's right, which is very light, and start darkening this up so it can get more low key. So I'm going to come around here. And I always go outside the boundaries of the image when I'm doing this stuff so that it captures the edges and I'm just loosely tracing just a little bit inside of him hopefully it will grab the edges and make a selection that won't need too much modification all right so it's missed some of the areas so I'm going to switch to my quick selection tool And I'm going to make that a little bigger with my right bracket key. And just push this out to the edges. Looks like it's traced along him pretty well. And I want to push that out. So it looks like uh, there's a little bit here that got missed. Okay, so it looks like we've got the marching ants selection pretty well around the lightest area of this image. So now what I want to do is try to darken that. And the tool, uh, the layer uh, adjustment that I'm going to try to use for that is, I think, an exposure layer. I think that would work better in this instant rather than uh, brightness, but you could experiment for yours. So bottom of the layers panel, uh, we're going to go to the add new adjustment layer icon, which is that circle with the line, come down to exposure. And now we have a new exposure layer. And let me bear with me for a moment because I just like to keep certain tools as my neutral tools here. Okay, so let me show you this mask. So you can see that what I selected, which is the lighter area of the image, is shown in white. And anything in black on the, uh, on the mask will not be affected by anything we do with exposure. In Photoshop, you can perform actions or reveal or show what happens on white on a layer and you hide black. So if we make any adjustments to this exposure layer, it's only going to happen where there's white. I'll hit Alt or Option again and click on this mask to hide that again. Now, one other thing I like to do while the mask is still active, so you know it's active with the white frame around it, is to soften the edges between the black and the white a little bit so that there's a softer transition. So to do that with that layer active, go to the Properties panel for that layer. Yours might be at the top and reverse to where mine is. 
and grab the feather slider and just pull it to the right a little bit. The more to the right you go, the softer the feather, the further left, the harder the line. So I'm just going to soften that transition between those areas a little bit. Then I'm going to click on the thumbnail for that exposure layer. And again, I'm going to go back to a neutral tool over here. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, and so uh, with this exposure, definitely this is too bright for me for a low key image. So in the properties panel, I'm going to work with the exposure slider and just start pulling that left and watching the image. So again, I can't give you a formula just for your image. Eyeball it to where you feel like it's getting dark enough where you can feel like it's considered a lot dark shadowy low key and fitting my definitions kind of an image you want contrasts actually that's pretty good it's kind of um an obvious split between him and there but i'm going to make other adjustments so hopefully we can soften that up a little bit okay and then one thing i want to do while i'm still on this layer and again this is for mine so you have to decide for yours um, this was so bright and now it's so dark. I want to keep a little bit of context that he is sitting on stairs. Otherwise, he looks like a cutout pasted on here. So going back to making my mask active with the white around it, because you don't want to paint on the actual uh, layer there, I'm going to grab from the toolbar my paintbrush tool, which is right there. It looks like a brush. And I want to paint away on this mask um, a little bit of the steps. So let's see here. I think I want to lower the, so uh, with the brush tool active, come to the options bar at the top of the interface for the brush. I want to make sure I've got a soft brush. Yes. And I'm going to really lower the opacity because I don't want to take this all the way back to where it was uh, i think four or five let's just see how that is all right now when you look at my highlighter here the green that i'm spinning around the green is just the highlighter the white in the center is my brush so i'm going to use the right bracket key and i just want to make this a little bit bigger and closer to the size of the step so i can do kind of a quick swipe and try to make this a little bit more visible again yeah so I'm just for each of the tops of the steps, because you see the lights coming from there. So there should be some light on the top of the steps. And I am using those as leading lines into him. OK, and if you overdo it, you can use your X key and flip the foreground color from the black to the white and put some back again. I think I will just leave mine there. OK, so that is that for the um, exposure layer and darkening up that part of my image that was too dark uh, was too light and if yours is then you can do the same thing now there's still some brightness here so another tool you can use if you want to darken some more and again each of these steps are optional if you've already hit where you want the darkness you want yours to be but i like to expose you to the different tools bottom of the layers panel again adding an adjustment layer let's this time try gradient map and be sure that you've got black as your foreground color and white as your background color so gradient map in the add adjustment layer gradient map from the bottom of the layers panel and in the properties for that gradient map layer you can see you have the gradient from black to white so that's why i said set this from black to white if you want to adjust the gradient because this has made this very stark um, but you can see where it's getting more dramatic and more low key looking. Left click once on this gradient bar and that pops open your gradient editor. And we're going to work with this bar in here. So we have a black color stop right now and a white color stop. OK, so um, I want to if you want to add more black to the image, you pull this color stop to the right. If you want to add more white or lightness to the image, you'd pull the white color stop left. OK, so let me maybe start with the white and just see what happens here. 
and I release it from time to time just to see what's happening. You can watch my image because this is not going to be a formula you can follow. So you just have to watch your image and you can stop and go as you go. So I, that opened up some of the wall that he's leaning against. So I kind of like that aspect of it. Um, and let's maybe in the mid-tones put back a little bit more brightness because this has gotten... Uh, a little bit on the darkish side for my taste, even for low key. So you can see that as soon as I clicked on one color stop, this tiny little diamond appeared. That's the midtone, it's the color midpoint. So again, as I said, you'd pull to the left to introduce more whites into the scene, you'd pull it to the right to introduce more blacks into the midtone. So I'm going to click on that and I want to start maybe pulling that a little bit left. And I'm going to release from time to time just to see what's happening. Yeah, I like the texture it's revealing in that wall he's leaning against because it just, to me, makes him look very despondent and sad and that something is just off that he just needed to be alone. And look at his closed body language. See, you're, you're trying to tell a story um, with this low-key stuff too all right i'm gonna leave that there let me click on here just so i can not overshoot it and see if i want to go down one more yeah so i'm gonna leave mine there so again i've got the context of the fact that he's leaning against this wall you can see by me um, doing that masking on the steps it's kept a hint of the fact that he's sitting on steps and so for mine, um, I am going to leave that there. So once you get yours where you like with that gradient editor, then come to the upper right in that pop-up box and click OK. All right, so now we've got that. I'm on all my neutral tools here. So in doing all this, um, the one thing that has happened here, well, so let me do one other thing before we leave this layer. With the mask active on that gradient map layer, I can see something else has happened here that I didn't want to happen or I'd like to control what happened. So click on the mask if this happens for you and make it active so the white frame is around it. By opening up some of the mid-tones and the highlights to get his face more stark, to get this very purposeful light on him more stark, it has made his hands this, the center of attention because they were right in the foreground and now they're glowing white. And I don't want people's attention going to his hands. I want the attention up in here. So we're going to mask this out or I'm going to mask this out. So if something happens like that with yours, you can tone it down by using the layer mask. So the mask is active and I want to work with black and the paintbrush from the toolbar and my brush you can see my black brush size in the center of my green highlighter here I'm going to start painting over this and let me put the opacity back to full on the brush setting in the options bar be sure it's on full opacity and I'm going to paint away some of that brightness that just got revealed by working with that gradient map And I'm going to try to stay just on the hands. It's not critical to be. Okay, so I think I've brought back, yeah, some of the gray and some of the tonal differentiation in his hand, but it still is very bright. So what I want to do next is, again, bottom the layers panel, come down to the Add New Adjustment Layer, circle with the line, click on that and come down to brightness and contrast because I want to tone this down even more. I do not want that to be uh, the center of attention. So let me, with this thumbnail active on that brightness layer in the properties panel for that brightness and contrast layer, I want to tone down the brightness. So I'm going to pull it to the left because since it's a brightness slider, to the right is brighter, to the left is darker. And I'm, again, watching the image, watching his hands. That's not bad. 
Yeah, I'm going to leave it in there. And the thing I like about what it's doing now is not only is it not such a glaring white, but it's drawing attention to the fact that he's got this wedding ring that's reflecting the light. So what is that saying about the story that is being built here? Those are the kinds of things that, you know, I'm just suggesting you think about too. So again, we don't want as much attention on the hand. So I'm also going to pull the contrast slider down so not as much attention I, I as I said I like the fact that that ring is standing out I'm watching the image so I stop and talk and look and slide here okay so I'm gonna leave that there now what have you noticed it's affected the whole image and that's obviously what we don't want just his hand so what I'm going to do is reuse this mask that I just created on the the gradient map layer right below it so to make a copy rather than starting all over again press alter option keep it depressed left click on the mask and drag it up to that empty mask and when it says replace layer mask you say yes now of course what did I say about masks white is what reveals and black is what hides so that's the opposite of what we want to done here so with that mask still active with the white frame about around it and that brightness and contrast layer active in the properties panel click on invert because that will affect the mask invert the mask there we go so now that brightness that we're taking away is only being applied to this white area which corresponds to his hands okay so you can see we've darkened them down from that glaring white which is a good thing because they're there you can see again it's the body language of how he's clutching himself but the attention is up where the bright light is hitting him okay so now let, let's just make a stamp layer and capture everything we've done to this point so I am going to come to the bottom of the layers panel to the box with the plus click on that you get an empty layer and this is my stamp Oops, helps if you can type S-T-A-M-P, stamp layer. And I'm going, so a stamp layer, as I've said in my other videos, is basically a composite of everything that's come before and all the steps that you've come before. And it just stamps it onto a single layer without collapsing what's come before. And the way you create the stamp layer is simultaneously, simultaneously pressing and holding shift, control or command, alt or option, and E. And there you can see we've got it stamped onto that layer. Okay. So one thing that we can do now, so again, for your image, you might be finished. So let me just come down and show you. This is where we started with, and we've got quite a nice low key black and white image here. But again, I like to keep working with mine. So again, this is optional for you, but um, you can, continue to play with your image if you want to add more tonal differentiation to your image and I'm going to try it with mine. So I want to work with the shadows and highlights on this layer now to try to just tweak you know what the balance of the shadows and the highlights because as I said you get a little bit of a cutout look here and unfortunately to work with shadows and highlights look where my highlighter is it's up under image adjustments shadows and highlights right there and all of these adjustments unlike the adjustments over in the layers panel with the adjustment layers these are all destructive and what that means in photoshop terms is any changes you make or alterations you make with these, they're basically baked into your image. You can't go back and adjust them. Whereas in an adjustment layer, you can. So to deal with that and allow you the flexibility to make changes to any settings you do in shadows and highlights, I'm suggesting that before you go into shadows and highlights, you convert this stamp layer to a smart object. So right click, I'll do it again right click in this empty area come down that menu to where it says convert to smart object and left click and you'll get a little icon in the lower right corner that shows you that's a smart object so then that's when you come back to image adjustments 
shadows and highlights and left click on that and we'll get this shadows and highlights pop-up box and again I can't give you a formula because you have to look at your image and see what's happening but in essence what you do in the shadows area is going to open up your blocked up shadows and what you do in the highlights area here is going to lessen overly bright highlights okay so let's just for mine try tweaking this a little bit and see what happens so um, how much of the shadows do I want to affect? So let me listen. I don't want to open them up too much. I've just gone to a lot of effort to make things dark. Uh, as far as the tone, I think I'll leave that down. And the range of uh, things to be affected. I'll stay in this region here okay now the highlights I think I want to make some more adjustments too because there's still a lot of glaring highlights so uh, for the amount I want them reduced let's go by this slider here I'll release it from time to time to see and I just watch the image and do this to taste so again it's almost like blend modes you have to just play with them until you see what you want all right i sort of like that because we're getting a little more less bright so the light is clearly it's almost like there's a street light just brightly shining on him but i'm getting in a little more of the grays and the mid-tones and the things that i think give him expression so that's what i'm kind of stuff i'm looking for uh the tones the range of tones around those pixels that I want affected. Let's stay in that area. And then the radius beyond the selected pixels. Again, I'm just, I usually go beyond where it looks good to me and then just stop. All right, so I'm gonna stay there for mine because again, it doesn't have to be perfection. You just get the idea that you can open up the shadows and darken down the highlights with this shadows and highlights and then under adjustments here i don't ever typically work with color because that's basically a saturation but let's just see if um adjusting the mid-tones does something here yeah i like so it's opening up a little bit of these steps again that had gotten all blocked up so it gives the context that he's it looks to me like he's sitting on subway steps or some kind of park steps where he's gone to just be by himself and deal with whatever he's dealing with so okay so i'm going to leave that because again it's it's added the context it doesn't look like he's just a cutout here anymore uh, we've got the texture of the wall it definitely looks like the light is shining from here and the drama is in here you can see the sparkle on that ring so i really like where the balance of the tones is so for mine and you just have to again look for yours i'm going to click on okay to accept that in mine and for me now i feel satisfied that i've created a pretty good low-key image black and white image from my original color image that wasn't the darkest to start with and as i said right up front you might need a lot less of these steps to achieve a nice low-key dark black and white image from your starting image if you had a darker starting image but i just like to show you these things so that you can no extra steps if you're not getting where you need to be now the other thing i want to show you if we go down here um, next to the properties panel is I have a histogram tab and again if you don't have one visible you can come to windows and click on histogram to see it and I just wanted to show you what I mentioned up front in the definitions so because this is a low key image if you look roughly midway on the histogram you can see the bulk of the pixels are to the left closer to the blacks and the dark tones there are some smattering there and as I said I don't I'm not a believer that you have to have everything to the left of center on the histogram for it to be a low key image so i think i've achieved the goal here and hopefully these steps will help you 
to create a nice black and white low key image too. So I'm going to call that the end of this demo number three. And I'm going to close this out and then we'll move on to the next and final image in the series of four demos. And the next video uh, in this or next demo here will show how to create a high key black and white photo look. So it will be like the opposite of this. So let me close this. I don't want to save. And I'm going to work in this demo number four on how to create a high key black and white photo look with this stock photo. And this is the photographer and I got the stock photo from the stock site called Unsplash. So I like to give credit where credit is due for photos. Let me just stretch this out so we can work with it and see what we're doing here a little bit. Okay, so again, just to stick with the model of how I'm approaching this. So we do have this full color image of models and we're going to try to convert this from this full color to a high key black and white photo. And again, so definitionally a high key image, to me, they appear brighter and lighter and airier than a normal image like this one. You don't have harsh shadows in a high key image. The backgrounds can be, but don't have to be blown out. So you can go very dramatic in terms of the whiteness, the lightness and the brightness. And I chose this because it's often the kind of look that's used in high fashion, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. Um, in a high key image, the lighter hues in the image tend to wash out to almost white when you're working with the black and white. Um, high key images also, I'd say, tend to convey less depth than other images where you have a full range of tones and there's more stark contrast between the tones. Um, and I would say again, just like what I said in the low key image, the majority of, but not necessarily all the pixels, should fall above the 50% gray point on the histogram after you have completed your high key conversion. So as far as capturing images to use to make a high key black and white image, I'd say pick subjects that are lighter toned. If you slightly overexpose when you're doing capture, it will probably help you to do a faster, easier conversion. And also I would suggest using a low ISO when you capture so that you don't introduce a lot of noise when you're doing your processing. So those are the capture tips I would suggest for um, what to start with in order to build a high key image. So that said, let's get into the demo of the step by steps of how I would convert an image like this to a high key black and white. So again, always um, duplicate your background layer. So layers panel, the background is open. You can drag this to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new layer icon, and that will give you a background copy, or you can do control or command J. So we got that duplicated. So I'm trying to show you things that aren't purely intuitive or not everybody shows you so you can get exposed to new things. So we just tried calculations for the conversion in the low key. Let me show you something else that uh, at least when I'm producing this video is relatively new to Photoshop. And uh, let's use another semi automated approach to do the initial conversion. So um, Photoshop has introduced adjustments. So I'll left click on this little icon that's the circle. And again, I believe you should be able to come to window adjustments if you don't see it in your interface. Um, so I believe it was introduced um, with Photoshop 2023 uh, near one of the last revs or releases. So you can see the, um, under adjustments, there are different presets of looks that they have already put together for you that can save time in achieving looks. So since I'm going for a black and white, I'm going to scan down to their black and white category. And all you have to do is hover over the look with your cursor. And then 
see if there's anything you like that gives you a starting look to work with okay and to me the lightest brightest ones the black and white is this first one which is the matte and just know that as soon as you click on this it's going to put uh, the layers over into your layers panel so that's why I say just hover until you find what you want to work with so I will left click on matte to get this initial auto conversion from color to black and white so you can see here it has put a black and white matte adjustments layer on the top and it's comprised of two sub layers so the nice thing about this is is if you like the look that's been achieved this is a way for you to reverse engineer it and see well how did they get this look and so you know you can then adjust it to your taste so this was this look was made up of a black and white adjustment layer and you can see where they set the different sliders for each of the colors and also a curves layer and you can see how they've adjusted the curve now the nice thing about this is is if you want to customize from here with their starting point you can do that so let me just say that maybe i want to lift the blacks a little bit more make them a little bit more hazy for this high key look than what they did in their preset look so i am going to grab this little circle it's the bottom left of the curve closest to the blacks and i want to move this up closer to where you see it says the whites and just make this a little hazier a little brighter than what they did in their preset look and again i watched the image and see what's happening here there we go all right so i think that made it a little brighter than it was so once you get that if you want to customize those versus just leave this where it is then you can click on that layer and I usually click this little carrot just so that the layer is flattened out. So there's our first step, which was using the adjustment preset and that I was able to modify. So now let's do something else to add further lightness and brightness to the image. And again, just do it to your taste because we are trying to make this light and bright. Come down to the bottom of the layers panel to the add new adjustment layer icon click on that and I'm going to work with levels so when that's highlighted left click and now we have a levels adjustment layer here so now if you look at with that layer active I'm going to click on the thumbnail for it look at the properties panel associated with that layer uh, and you can see we have this histogram here and these are the blacks this is the midtones and this are the whites so the black handle mid-tone handle and white handle and you can start moving these transformation handles around to get the look and again trial and error so let me start with the black and just see if we keep a little bit of contrast here I don't want to bring back too much black after getting rid of it but there's areas I don't want to lose definition right so I'll just keep that subtle for now till I see what I want um, I want to make this a little softer and brighter because this is still a little dark for a high key image. So working with the mid-tones and here I want to start pulling this towards the left. That's not bad. Let me just see if I want to go any further. Yeah, that's kind of nice so you can see it's getting brighter and lighter as i do this okay and then the white transformation handle see what that will do or if we'll blow things out too much with that yeah, that's pretty good actually let me just see when it gets close to what i like the look of then i switch to using my up and down arrows with that box highlighted just to see if I can finesse it okay all right so now we already have so I mean for your image this might do it for you because this is definitely a high key image now relative I mean I don't say black and white but it's it's a lot more high key than what the original black and white conversion is but um this to me looks a little flat and I even though I said that high key images tend to have a little more flatness, a little less depth, 
I want this to have more pop because clearly this is a fashion shot and I want that pop to it. So I'm going to select their lips because if you look at, just let me go back to the color one, look at how dark. See, this is a very fashion-y look with the dark eyes and the dark lips. And I don't want to lose that look even though I'm going for a very high key look. So I want to select their lips and eyes and make them darker again. So let me just zoom in so it's easier to see what we're working with here. And I am going to select their lips and eyes. And I'm just going to use, so coming to the toolbar, I am mine docked on the right. Uh, click. So here is my object selection tool. And see the little arrow to the right? Right click on that. And that's where I can find my quick selection tool. So if you don't see the tool, just click on that little flyout arrow to see the tools that are accessible there. So I am going to, and again, the green is my highlighter. The white is my brush. I'm going to use the left bracket key and make this smaller for making selections in these small areas. So I want to select just her lips. There we go. I just clicked and it did that. Now I'm going to select her eyes. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. I'm trying to just stay on her lid and the eye area. I might come out just a little bit there. And then I'm going to press the shift key just to be sure we don't nuke any of the selections I've already made. So I'm adding to the selection. And then I'm going to select her eye. And uh, I don't know if you're noticing, but uh, if I select too much and I press the Alt or Option key, it switches to a minus. Look, it's the center of the black there, plus. Alt or Option minus, you can take away. Okay, and I'm going to say that's good enough, but let me add this eye to. And I'm trying to just stay at the eye and the lid. And I'm not going to try to capture that. Okay, so now with that selection active, I want to go to Levels again. So Layers Panel, bottom of the Layers Panel to add new adjustment layer icon right there. Come down to where it says Levels. And you can see here, I only have those areas that are going to get worked on are the areas in white, which were the eyes and the lips. Let me just go back to my Neutral tool here. And with that mask active and that layer active in the properties panel, again, I'm just going to feather and soften the transition between the lips and the skin so that it doesn't become a harsh adjustment that I'm making. Okay, and then click on the thumbnail for the levels. And I want to make the lips darker. So again, I'm going to work with the black on the levels properties work with the black transform tool and start pulling this to the right to make the lips darker and i'm just watching the lips and the eyes that were selected and seeing how dark they get and again it's just to taste but as i said for a fashion shot you can go pretty dramatic and i'm going to temper this with the midtone so let me just Leave that there for now and see what I want to do. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the midtone. So if you look on the right, I'm still on this histogram for levels. I'm going to click on the midtones transformation slider. And maybe I'll just leave that where it is because that moved over. All right, let me see with the white because uh, I want to bring back and be sure that the highlights that are in the lips or on the lids are still there. So let me pull this whites to add more whites back into this and watch and see if those areas in the lips and the eyes that I want to have some highlights in them. Yeah, see, they're coming back again. All right. 
Yep, getting too much. And again, I'm not being perfectionist about this because there's getting haloing there, but on yours, you'd spend the time. So if that got a little too light again, then I would work with the black slider again. All right, I'm going to leave that there uh, just to give you a sense. All right, so let me shrink this back or zoom back out so you can see the difference that that made. So see, it just gives it that pop, especially for a high fashion look. I prefer that kind of a look. So we've gone from a full color image that is not at all particularly bright. There's bright lights on their dresses to a high key look where there's a lot of brightness with just some pop of darkness and again depending on your image you might not want that pop you might want it all closer to a single tone and that's perfectly fine so the other thing that i noticed on my image and you have to look at yours is that so this is the high key conversion part so now there's just some more finishing that's optional if you want to do it for your image so that basically gets you to your um, level of, of high key. So let me add a stamp layer just so that I kind of bake this onto a layer. So bottom of the layers panel, add new layer icon right there. And we'll do shift, control or command, alt or option and E all at the same time to create that stamp layer. Okay. And so now what I want to show you is I Things like this are distractions to me in this image. So I want all the attention just on them and then the background to be just that sort of a background that sets them off. So I want to use Photoshop's remove tool. So if there are still distractions in your image that you want to remove after you get it converted to this high key look or style, then create that stamp layer. And I like to work on an empty layer with the remove tool. So bottom of your layers panel, Add new layer icon, that's the box with the plus right there. And then coming down on your tool bar, I'm going to find the remove tool, make sure that's active, has the black behind it. And I'm going to make that, the, the tool is the black, so I'm going to make that a little smaller. And I'm going to get rid of, I don't know if that's a light switch or whatever there, but I'm going to paint over that. So that distraction is gone. I don't really like these things leading into the back of her dress. I don't like this down here. I mean, anything that's detracting from her dress. I don't like this black sticking out of back of her derriere. Uh, this could be a distraction here. So anything, and again, I'm not going to get too perf perfectionist. I don't care for this because it draws your eye over there. So just for your own images, decide if there are things that are distractions and I'd suggest that you remove them to keep the attention on what the attention on. So this was just a label. It's, you know, what I did there. That was the remove. Well, let me just rather than remove tool, it's a remove tool to get rid of distractions. Okay. All right. So now again, to me, this is You've gone from your full color image to your high key image with the distractions removed. So this really is sort of the final conversion. But again, I want to give you an optional thing that you can try. So this is like bonus content. How's that? So I'm going to make another stamp layer, bottom of the layers panel, come to the add new layer icon. And this is going to be a stamp layer. So this is optional to add glow to the highlights in this image. So if you want it to be an even glowier, almost like what I did in my infrared uh, example in the prior video, then you can do that too. So to get the stamp layer, we're going to do shift, control or command, alter option and E all simultaneously. All right, so this is optional to add a bit of a soft glow to this high key look. So again, we're going to come back to the channels tab or the channels panel. And what you do is use control or command. So press the control or command and click on the RGB channel right there. 
And if you look at my image, you'll see that what that has done is it has selected the highlights in the image. So that's a way to select the highlights in the image. So now we're going to go back to the Layers tab and the Layers panel. And I'm going to do a Control or Command J to put this, this selection of the highlights onto its own layer. So Control or Command J. And this is the channel selected highlights. Okay. And if I hide all, if I get rid of all those eyes, you'll see if you look closely here in my transparency, hopefully it will come through. You can see that it has put the highlights on it, their own layer there. Okay. Let me come back up and be sure we're on that layer. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to use a Gaussian blur just to slightly blur those highlights to give them sort of a glowier look. And again, for something like a high fashion look that might be desirable, if not for you, it's just something for you to know about if you'd like to try it or use it in another context where you want a light glowy blur to highlights. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, click on that. And then you're going to adjust. So I keep mine set to preview so we can see I keep that checked on. And we're going to adjust the radius of this. And you can see that the more right you go, the more glow or blur or whatever there is, the more left there is, is the less blur and therefore the less glow effect. So I'm just going to give a hint of blur here. I don't need to go too crazy but I think it gives it a sort of a cool editorial fashion look. So again, I'm going to stay in that four pixels range. And once you get your blur or glow to the level that you like, click OK, and that sends it back to that layer. Now, the thing is, we don't have a layer mask here. It's impacting the entire layer. And I usually like to keep things in portraits, particularly um, the lips and the eyes and the, face, the key facial features not blurred. I like them to stay sharp. So I'm going to add a mask to this layer and mask out that blur or glow from those facial features. So bottom of the layers panel, go to this box with the circle, which is the add layer mask. And there we go. And so right now, because it's a white mask, it's revealing everything we just did. The blur is over the entire image. Kind of go to the toolbar, grab the brush tool, make sure we're painting with black. And I want to paint out the eyes and the lips because we don't want the blur on them. We want them to stay sharper. So again, I think I'll just zoom in a bit on this so it makes it easier to do this. The black is my brush size, so I'm going to use the left bracket key to make that smaller to control where I'm brushing away the blur or the faux glow. Okay, so I want her eyes, and I think maybe her eyebrows to stay not blurry and glowy. And again, when we go in closer, you can see that I might also maybe see her ear, ear should stay a little bit sharper. Do the same with this model. And again, I'd spend more time on an actual image versus a demo, but you can see it's going to add the pop to the eyes by keeping that. And I'm doing her brows. And I'll just do a little bit of the inner ear there too. And then zoom back out. So I'm doing a control minus just to get back out. Uh, so again, we have added this Gaussian blur that adds just a slight hint of a blur or a glow to the image. It shouldn't really glow luminously. So that is the end of the demo, plus the optional part on how to add a little bit of a glow to an image. And we've gone from our starting full color image to a high key black and white image. And if we do the same thing I didn't show you on the histogram for the low key, you can see that again, if you look at roughly midpoint, the bulk of the pixels are to the right where they should be with a high key image. And we just have some hints of darkness with some of the midtones in the hair and the lips just to give it 
a little bit of pop for a high fashion glow. So uh, that is the end of my demos. So in this two part video workshop, I've shown you four different methods to achieve creative black and white looks and styles. In this video, I covered how to convert color photos to both low key and high key black and white looks or styles. So I hope you have fun experimenting to see what fine art photography results you can achieve with your images and converting them to black and white. Take care.